We are going to try our hand at some cyanotype printing today. Fair warning, this is our first time really doing this, but after a bunch of tries, I think we walked away with a lot of really good lessons learned and some really good prints as well. Cyanotype printing is how architectural blueprints used to be made, thus the term blueprints, very creative naming. When you expose these certain chemicals to UV light, they turn this vibrant, rich cyan color. When you block portions of, of it from being exposed, you get white areas. It's quite a simple process, but you can really get creative with it and add a bunch of additives to alter the print, like salt, tea, hydrogen peroxide, some of it which we will try later on in this video. When you buy these chemicals, they come in a powder form, so you have to hydrate them, which is quite easy. You just add water based on the instructions on the back of the bottles. Both type A and B have different water ratios that you need, so you need to just take a look and do some real measuring instead of just filling up each bottle with water. Also, I've heard that distilled water works best for consistent results. Uh, we just used regular tap water here, but next time we will definitely be trying to still to see how it compares. As architectural designers, Eva and I have always wanted to try cyanotype printing, even though it is completely obsolete in the world of architecture, we just didn't know how e just how easy it was to do. I remember some older architects that we've talked to in the past uh, talking about how bad it was to work in the blueprint room and the chemical exposure and yada yada, and I remember thinking to myself, ooh, that sounds fun. So here we are, hopefully we don't end up poisoning ourselves. Disclaimer, we are not scientists by any means, and this magical combination of com chemical compounds is way above our heads. The best I can describe is that the sunlight reacts with the iron in the ferric ammonium citrate, and then once that uh, reaction has taken place, the potassium ferrocyanide steps in and reacts with the ferric ammonium citrate to create that deep blue color. Both chemicals are then soluble in water, so once your print is developed, all you need to do is rinse it in a water bath for a few minutes and get any remaining chemical off and the blue will stay. We are now mixing our chemicals together, again just using the instructions on the bottle it says to mix them one to one ratio. This scale is not the most accurate scale unfortunately, but it'll do for the first experimental prints that we're doing. The next thing we need to do is select some paper. Now if you research this you'll read all sorts of stuff online like Oh, I only use 100% cotton hot pressed watercolor paper with 300 GSM. And for professionals, there's some truth to that. Uh, but if you're just starting out like we are though, you really don't need anything fancy and you really don't want to be spending money on some fancy paper if it's just going to get ruined anyways or you're not going to have a quality print. So we used a variety of materials just to see how it would work and what we liked. We've got some hot press watercolor paper, some cold press watercolor paper, canvas fabric, um, actual canvases, and a bunch of other just stuff too. Basically just stuff that we found in our art supply closet that we haven't used yet. I've also seen people use glass as a printing surface, so it's really up to you and what you're interested in. One thing that we found right away is that on bigger sheets of watercolor paper, unless you've got a super high GSM paper, Paper, you're going to want to stretch it properly. That involves a piece of plywood that you staple your paper to while it's soaking wet. Then as the paper dries, it stretches out and becomes nice and taut. If you're struggling with wrinkles and warbles in your paper after you wet it, go ahead and try stretching it. Uh, the other thing that you can do that we learned really quickly is that you can get a nice even coating of this chemical water mixture by just treating it like a watercolor painting in that you need to give your surface a slight slope while you're painting otherwise water will pool and you won't get an even coverage and distribution of the chemicals. You can also print out image negatives on a clear transfer paper. The black ink will keep the UV from exposing and it's pretty much that simple. Just make sure you invert the image in a Photoshop like program. This program is free and online which is really great. The next thing you can do is grab some foliage from your backyard such as flowers, grasses, leaves, and those will work as a UV blocker as well. As I'm narrating this, I'm really curious to see what adding splatters of sunscreen would do to a cyanotype. If you've tried that for some reason, let me know in the comments how it turned out. So now that we've got a plethora of UV blocking materials, we can start laying out our prints. Sincere apologies for the bad lighting here, we are trying our best not to expose these prints to any UV before they're ready, and since light fixtures emit a very small amount of UV, we tried to make it as dark as possible in here. 
Also, just make sure your cyanotypes are fully dried before you start laying out your prints. You'll get some weird splotchiness and faint yellow areas if, you, if it's just not dried fully. Videos that we watched beforehand were saying like, oh, it'll take five to 10 minutes to fully expose. Well, I don't know what sun they were using, but here in the Texas summer, it took a very short time. You can literally watch it change. Texas, I guess. To be fair, these first few prints we did not expose long enough, and I think we only did about 30 seconds or so, but they still turned out fairly blue just in that short amount of time. Uh, you're going to want to wash off any remaining chemicals that were not exposed. We don't have prop a proper water bath setup, and I highly recommend it for cyanotyping, as opposed to rinsing it in the water like we did here. The water bath will really just help get all of the chemicals off to prevent them from exposing later on and ruining the print. A few of our early prints succumbed to the elements and unfortunately became unusable since we didn't rinse them properly. So this right here is real-time exposure. You can see over the course of 30 seconds just how blue it gets so quickly. Even through this layer of translucent patterned glass that we thought would be really cool, turns out it did nothing. Uh, I, I wish I could tell you there was a standard exposure time when using sunlight, but in reality it just depends on where you are and what the weather is like that day. If it's cloudy, it'll take a long time to expose. If it exposes at all, general rule of thumb is to keep an eye on it and take it off the UV when it looks ready. It's a really sunny day here in San Antonio with some scattered clouds. And while we let that one expose, we're going to mix up a little hydrogen peroxide bath. Hydrogen peroxide is supposed to make prints turn a much darker, deeper blue. A uh, 1 to 10 ratio is what's recommended. I found that it really doesn't matter too much and that we didn't go for like a precise measuring here and it turned out just fine. Well, I say that and then realize that this print got completely whited out. I think it's a couple of things. We didn't expose it long enough and we let it sit in the hydrogen peroxide bath too long. I found that if you do the hydrogen peroxide thing, you really don't need a bath. Later on, I mixed some in a cup and just poured it slowly over the whole print and it worked beautifully. I do like to rinse any remaining hydrogen peroxide off after the bath just to make sure it is done reacting though. This canvas we're using also didn't have the best results. I think the canvas absorbed a lot of the chemicals and we were left with a much thinner layer of cyanotype juices that, than what we needed. Though I really do like how this one turned out even if it's not fully blued. And here's the one that we let sit in the hydrogen peroxide bath too long, which is so sad because those holy leaf things were really cool and we'll have to go find some more and try it again. Eva stepping in here for the cat moments. We used this print that we printed out and inverted earlier in the video and put that on vellum actually because our transparency paper didn't work terribly well. And we used that. Turns out that the vellum or tracing paper essentially was transparent enough to expose, which worked out great. This um, trellis picture as well we tried out, but this was on the canvas and I think the canvas absorbed way, way too much of the cyanotype, so we kind of got a weird result with that. The flower was super cool. We got some fun transparency from these petals because the petals are so thin naturally. We actually got sort of a gradient from where they're thicker to thinner within the cyanotype because when they're thinner, the UV does penetrate a little bit and sort of semi-exposed, as you can see here. And we got a little bit of the letters on that one as well. Now that we kind of had an idea of what we were doing, we started to compose the larger piece that we had prepped. Um, and this was just with some foliage from the garden, some weeds, the larger leaf there is from my papaya plant, just some grasses, just anything kind of fun and natural to lay on there that we can get sort of semi-flat so that it lays and doesn't roll around or move around. We used a small piece of glass to hold down the smaller parts, but the bigger parts didn't move while we did it. And again, we're just mind blown by how fast this exposed. Again, we're rinsing this off and just kind of letting those weeds fall into the sink. Super thrilled with some of the patterning here, those leaves with the kind of insects eaten out holes are truly stellar and I love the flowers of course because of that transparency thing I mentioned earlier. And again, always rinse super super well. We found that some of ours, as they've sat for a couple of days or weeks at this point, 
have kind of continued to expose in a strange way. So make sure that you've rinsed thoroughly or let soak your paper before you call it done and good enough because those chemicals like to stick around. I was just having fun with this one and it kind of turned out a little strange, but it's also a really great example of how the hydrogen peroxide kind of converts that color from just kind of take note of this beautiful cyan sort of color here. And then when I dip it in that bath, it turns to a really deep, like really dark wash denim color, which is truly stunning. Just look how crazy and vibrant that is suddenly, just one single dip in the water. And as always, we rinse off the hydrogen peroxide just to make sure that it doesn't stick around because hydrogen peroxide can have a bleaching effect. Now, this is the watercolor paper stretching that I mentioned earlier, but don't judge us if you are a professional uh, paper stretcher. Uh, this one kind of got ruined and the staples are ripping out, which is why we are using this one as a test because the other papers that we stretched turned out a lot nicer than this one. Now I have this crazy idea to take a mirror and smash it to pieces on a cyanotype print while it's exposing. In theory, it will expose the cracks and block the light where the mirror shards are. The mirror is left over from a renovation and we really have no use for it. So why, why not make some kind of art out of it? I'm using uh, my collection of stained glass equipment to score and break the mirror into the size that I need. I'm cutting this piece to fit right on top of my print. Uh, stained glass is also one of my passions, so if you are also interested in stained glass, ceramics, and all sorts of other hobbies like we are, may I humbly suggest hitting that subscribe button. We are trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year, which would be absolutely crazy. Here's where I have to say, wear eye protection when you are hitting glass with a hammer. Glass in your eye is not fun. It would seem obvious, but that's the world we live in. Also gloves to pick up any of the scraps. Eva is currently holding up a piece of plywood to shade my print while I get the mirror off uh, the print, which is really helpful in creating a good quality print. You really want to avoid exposing any areas of sun that you don't want to expose until you are able to just rinse off the, the all the exposey chemicals. Once the glass is off, I can flip it upside down and take it over to our faucet area for a good rinse. This is turning out so freaking cool. There are things that I'm already seeing that I want to fix in the next round, like the yellow spots you see at the top where I didn't let it dry fully before exposing it. And I want to get some paper that is probably stretched without the wrinkles. Other than that though, I'm loving this and I can see myself doing a ton of these things. Here goes the hydrogen peroxide rinse. It's crazy how fast the hydrogen peroxide reacts with the blue to create such a beautiful deep blue. I'm kind of of the opinion that it's not worth doing cyanotypes if you're not going to take the next step by adding the hydrogen peroxide. It just makes it look so much better. Here are some nice really cool shots and a second one that I did and a weird self portrait that I tried. Neighbors had no idea what I was doing when I was just laying in my yard on some plywood waiting for it to expose, but hey, whatever. I'm on a quest to make the world's most unluckiest painting. I've already spilled salt all over this one. Salt really has a cool reaction with cyanotypes, so stick around to see it. Then I'm breaking a mirror on it and uh, while I'm at it, unfortunately I was fresh out of black cats, but we'll just have to make do. I'd love if someone in the comments could calculate the number of bad luck years I'll have now that I'm done with this painting. Just for my own future planning, you know, maybe I don't take out a mortgage in the next seven years or something, we'll see. Not like that's gonna happen anyways, but I guess I just won't be pushing my luck for the rest of my life. If you don't hear from me after this, you can probably surmise that I've met my fate. Totally worth it for cool art like this though. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more!